Thanks for joining us on the Carolina Justice Report. I'm Rainey Romero. Today we're talking all about Eliza Fletcher. Thanks for joining us. I'm here with attorneys Shardy Crawford and Amy Lawrence. How you doing, ladies? I'm good. Pretty good. So, sad story with Eliza Fletcher. I mean, it's all over the news. I think everyone pretty much knows what happens, what happened. But just in case, let's recap kind of what happened with Eliza. Either of you want to kind of tell us the back backstory? So, Eliza was a 37-year-old, or no, 34-year-old, 34, 34-year-old yeah. 34 mother of two um, who went out jogging, got up at four, hit the hit the pavement something she did practically every morning um and as someone who works out very early in the morning i know what that looks like because when you're a working mom right you gotta you gotta hit it hard early mm -hmm. if not you won't you won't have the time or the energy to do it later and um and she doesn't come back and um we, we know that someone called in and said that they had found a uh, cell phone and like a flip-flop a slide which is um what my kids call um like adidas like flip-flops to kind of you know, doesn't have a a toe place or whatever, just slide your foot in like we have for soccer. And um, and they start going back and looking and somebody called in a struggle that they'd seen a struggle or heard a struggle um, earlier uh, in the morning. And then at seven o'clock, the husband realizes she has not come back yet because he's up trying to wrestle kids and wrangle them. And he realizes she's not back yet. And he calls the police and they put it together very quickly. So well, she, this was caught, at least a portion of it was caught on, yes, on so film. Was, right? So they started pulling cameras. I mean, the police went to work very, very quickly. And the good thing is, is that it happened around uh, the Memphis University. Mm -hmm. So the college campus, so, which means they had all this, this footage to go by. And what they found was that she was stalked by a car and um, taken by a man and she fought like hell. Mm. And part of, part of that struggle is her cell phone ends up on the ground and his shoe comes off. Mm -hmm. And have you ever seen DNA evidence come back in hours? I have not. No. I've never seen that before. Never. Mad kudos to uh, the Memphis police because they had they did DNA testing on that slide um, within hours, which is just unheard of. Unheard. Mm -hmm. I've never. I mean, it takes sometimes years to get DNA wow. back. Wow. Um, yeah. And, but it, it got processed very quickly and they realized who it was because it, it hit a match and the match was Cleothian. What was his last Cleothian name? Henderson. 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 Yep. Yeah. And he had actually been in prison for 20 years for kidnapping um, a man, a lawyer, and taking him to an ATM. And, and he happened to um, see a, poli a Metro police officer and who, he screamed for help and everybody went running. And, but he, he did 20 years in prison for that. Mm for kidnapping uh, before. And so they went looking for him and um, they found, they the found him and he right? went, yeah, they found him and he went running and then they uh, found his brother and his brother said they was acting all weird that morning mm -hmm. and was cleaning his car like a yeah, crazy person. Floor cleaner all in the car and that he also washed his clothes in the sink. Yeah. And so they, they got a hold of, um, they finally found him and then they found her body about seven miles from his, his brother's home. It's a terrible story. Um, you know, this is kind of in a string of runners that have been kidnapped and, and raped and killed over the course of, you know, I feel like the last few years, there was kind of like a string of runners that we found out about this kind of thing happening to. Um, Eliza was a, a teacher and, at a Catholic school there. And, um, you know, they played as people are remembering her and, and um, you know, thinking back on her time, they're playing all these videos of her singing Sunday school type of songs the to, these, to these kids. Yeah, and um, just seemed like a very soft-spoken, um, sweet person. Uh, so it's just a terrible thing. The, I saw one of the press conferences where they had her family kind of lined up. This was before they actually found her body. So the family was asking for just any, any evidence or any if anybody saw anything. And I mean, gosh, you just see the pain on the, the family's face. I mean, I just can't imagine something like like this going on. But um, and it just came out recently that um, Henderson, the guy who was charged or has been taken taken in, um, that he did this with somebody else. So just recently it has come out that 
Um, he was just indicted for another female abducting and raping her. I don't think she was killed, but so new stuff is coming out about this guy of, of other things that he's done as well. Do we know the cause of death for Eliza yet? I don't think, they've I don't think that's come out yet. Mm -hmm. I know that, I mean, there's like all kinds of really unusual things. Just, I mean, I think the DNA getting processed very quickly is just really weird. They, it come out that she's like a, a, an heiress. I don't think that really has anything to do with it. No. Yeah, I, mean, I feel like that's a weird thing to bring up. I know. Well, like it gets a better headline is what you, you know, well, what you're yeah. thinking. Mm -hmm. You know, right after it happened, I guess like on social media, when they start talking about this, um, there were comments about, well, why was she running at that time of morning? And, you know, it's kind of like, you know, saying why did a that a girl deserve to be raped because she was wearing a short skirt? And like that is taking the the light off of what's most important. And, right. you know, what we need to be talking about is why is it that I as a woman can't even run at whatever time without having this fear and this real life fear that I'm going to be abducted, mm -hmm. raped and murdered. I can't even run around a college campus without being attacked. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, human trafficking is real. Uh, my daughter always fusses at me because um, I always will tell her how to, that she needs to be careful. She's at college now. Um, and I'm constantly telling her, you know, don't walk by yourself. Um, you know, even when they leave the football games, cause sometimes she'll go with her friends, but decide that she wants to leave without her friends. And, um, uh, she's in Columbia and it's really dark, um, mm -hmm. around campus when you're leaving and the buses dump you off at the central location and all the other buses stop running. And so you have to walk back to wherever you live on campus, you know, in the dark. And I'm constantly telling her about human trafficking and being concerned about being abducted. And it's so sad that I'm even having to say that, mm -hmm. you know, that why is this a, a real life fear? When I was a kid, my dad, like I, like when I say kid, I mean like I remember 16, I'd want to go to like, this is before like Walmart really took off. I'll tell you how old I am. <laughs> we had a Kmart and my, I would like want to go at like nine o'clock at night. My dad's answer to anything, if I want to do anything late is absolutely not. You'll be raped, dead, laying in the ditch, right? And back then it was just like, you didn't, you didn't really hit home with what that meant, but like, that's the real reality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that as a woman, you have to worry about these things and you have to be hyper vigilant and you have to be watching. And, you know, we do a lot of work with sexual assault survivors and um, y y we always get this weird pushback from the parents and it's, it's women too, not just dads. It's like, well, like, you know, she shouldn't have been drinking or this or that, or why was she even there? And, and I'm like, you sh I should be able to get naked and run through the streets completely hammered and drunk and not have to worry about somebody raping me and killing me. Mm -hmm. Like that's, the yeah. problem is, is like, that's where we've, we put the narrative and the spotlight is on my actions. And really we should be saying, how, what are, what are we doing to raise men that think that this is okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's like, sexual violence in pornography or I mean, like we need to take a look at all of it whether it's sexual violence on tv you know like you know because sexy sales mm -hmm. you know sh liza fletcher this happens every day all day in every community across america but you know she's pretty you know it's this is in it and it, it, it sex sells like the scandalous of it and it's just it's happening everywhere. It's happening to women everywhere. And like, we got to take a long look at like, like what, what kind of men are we raising? Mm -hmm. And, and it's not just that like, well, my kid doesn't rape anybody. I've told him we don't, we don't do that kind of thing, but it's also, what are you doing? Like, we also need to teach our kids that when we see things that we stop it. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So like if my kid sees, um, another kid being picked on or whatever. It's not just like, I didn't do it. It's that they didn't allow that to happen. We don't talk like that and we don't act like that, mm -hmm. you know? So we have to teach our kids, not just that we don't, we don't rape people, but also we stop and protect women, mm -hmm. that women are valued and are equals and that we protect them. Mm -hmm. And we're not gonna allow those things to happen. And, and men who talk like that about women, um, whether it's like sexually explicit or whatever that may be, like that's, we don't talk like that. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not locker room talk that we don't talk like that. My yeah. husband doesn't talk like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My sons, my brother doesn't talk like that. My dad doesn't talk like that. Mm -hmm. So no, not all men do it. Right. Yeah. 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 But it's like that conversation. It's like always, it's like, it just keeps playing, you know, well, you know, boys will be boys. It's like, no, yeah. fuck that. No, no, no. Men will be held accountable for their actions. Mm -hmm. 
you know, I don't care about what their future looks like. Imagine what you just did to hers. Like, mm -hmm. these are the conversations we, we should be having. Right. And the yeah. next step, too, is just the communities, is yeah. that we need to be concerned in all communities yeah. about women who are going missing. You know, not just when it's the kindergarten teacher, um, you know, white female from an affluent family uh, in, you know, Memphis, right around a college campus, but it's the indigenous women on the reservations in America. And it's I don't the, think it, I don't think people really understand what you're is a going sex on, worker or yes. whatever it may be. You know, um, they should all get the media light and attention as well as. Um, you know, law enforcement who's seeking out mm -hmm. the predators and mm -hmm. people who are preying on these these women. Because the news doesn't pick it up. I think the majority of the world doesn't understand that women, um, Native American women, indigenous women are going missing off of reservations. Like, ugh. like I would say by the truckloads, but that's literally, that's the literal answer by the truckloads. Mm -hmm. Women are disappearing and no one's talking about it. Mm -hmm. And it's not just in, in you know, in Memphis with, you know, an heiress, and God bless her, I don't mean to take away from the tragedy that she has went through, but it's happening everywhere. And we gotta start talking about it. Cause you know, I, we say this all the time, that of which we do not acknowledge, we cannot change. Mm -hmm. And so if we don't start talking about the violence that we have that has been perpetuated, not just against one woman, but all women, yeah. mm -hmm. then we're losing sight and we can't fix it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's going down right in your backyard. I remember having, a client who had gone, I represent her, maybe like a drug possession or something. Um, but when she came back, because she had a um, bench warrant, which is when you fail to appear at court, she comes back and I go and meet with her and she's like, Miss Crawford, I was a victim of human trafficking. And I'm like, wait, what? That is, like when you, you hear know? that, you're just like, what does that even mean? And, um, and she said, yes, I've been, I was taken right here in Myrtle Beach and um, taken all around the country. And she said, and what wound up happening was when they were putting me on a boat to Cuba, um, the government stepped in. And I wanna say it was either the FBI or this, I, I believe it was FBI stepped in. And you know, it sounded so crazy to me, right? Like, oh, okay, <laughs> no way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but she gave me a contact to an individual that worked with the FBI. And she said, can you, you can call and confirm it. And I called him and he confirmed it. And he said, you know, I need really need you to help her because we've got all kinds of programs down in Miami to help her um, where these monasteries will help her come in and give her a job and give her treatment. Um, and we work with the courts to make sure that the individual who did this to her doesn't receive bond, you know, but right in our backyards, these women are being hurt and taken and you know we need to do something about it and Ugh. that's not something that you would hear about on a regular no. basis well, people don't Scary. realize that myrtle beach south carolina is one of the worst cities in the entire nation like top five it used to be like number two at one point for human trafficking and it and when you think about it it really makes sense um because we are an hour from i-95 right mm -hmm. so within an hour you can be two you know you can be on 95 and almost a state over within two Either way, well, within an hour, you can be in North Carolina and headed up. And and so what happens is we have this influx of tourists. Mm -hmm. Families. And then we also have these J1 these J J1, J1, J1 visa, visa mm -hmm. kids come in and they're gone. And there's a lot of times there's not anybody to even know what it, what's happened. Like there's not even there to report it until oh, it's yeah. too late. Yeah. So, you know, I see on Facebook all the time and we always get involved because that's what we do um, of like, kids who went missing and women who went missing and we immediately um are uh we have a private <coughs> investigator bill beam who we all know and love um who's a retired police officer and he jumps right in and, and helps us try to find those women and we go down to the women's shelter and and the homeless um kitchen where they're feeding people and we go to the boulevard and we go sometimes i mean i've kicked in a couple of doors of a crack house before looking for people um and we try to find them because it is it's terribly bad here oh yeah i mean it's your worst nightmare, yeah. right? I just mm -hmm. can't. I'm in, you know, these mom groups on Facebook and stuff, which that's a whole nother crazy thing. But um, I remember recently there was a grandmother who took her kid to one of the water, water parks. parks. That's yep. confirmed that that really happened. Uh, I told a police officer friend of mine about took that. Took her kid to the water park and was watching her. It wasn't like she neglected her. She walked around the slide to go get her from the other slide. And in the however many seconds it took, for her to walk around the slide to, to grab her, she could not find her. 
could not find her anywhere. I was looking everywhere, grabbed somebody right away and said, hey, help me, I can't find my granddaughter. They got on the walkie-talkies. And, and the, the water park seemed to have done a really great oh, job great responding job, yeah. very quickly. Um, but they, they sent out, hey, everybody look for this girl. Um, and they found a couple exiting the park. She had all, they had already gone all the way up to the, the end of the park and exiting. Um, they found a, a couple that had this child and they stopped them and took the child. And they, the, oh the little girl didn't know any, like they said that they were taking her to go find her grandma and mm-hmm. they were gonna go get some pizza and find, find the grandma. And the little girl didn't think anything of it, just walked hand in hand right with them, almost completely out of the water park and that girl would have been gone. Right. Um, and that just happened this summer. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it, it, it's very scary. I mean, even when you're there watching the child, these things can happen, so. I was just saying, so I, um, recently, I went on a trip this past weekend um, and flew to Texas. And my trip, I flew with my five-month-old. And, um, Airports, for some reason, now have changing stations like within the bathroom, like b- not when you actually go into a stall. Right. Yeah. And so what that means as a mom is it's hard for you to use the bathroom when you also have the child. Right. But you don't have anywhere to put her. Yeah. So um, I was changing her in the bathroom and um, a woman I didn't even wasn't even paying attention was standing behind me. And um, when I got finished changing her, she said, do you want to go to the bathroom now? And I was like, huh? She says, do you have to go to the bathroom? And I said, no. And she said, oh, well, if you want to go to the bathroom, you can go and I'll hold your baby. Oh, hell no. She says, and I said, huh? And she said, yeah, if you want to go to the bathroom, I'll hold her for you. I'll stand right here. You don't have to worry. Which, that's creepy. That is so creepy. Let me say, you know, now, maybe she was a mom. Yeah. Who you're like knows Spidey how sense hard come it is yeah. to go to the bathroom and she sees me by myself and thinks that there isn't anyone else with me. And, you know, she's just offering something like a good mom would do. Yeah. Perhaps maybe that's what it was. You know, but at the same time, I was saying to myself, mm. but what if I did, right? Yeah. And as I crouched to use the bathroom and this woman takes my child. She's gone. Imagine how fast and far she could get in an airport full of people with my baby. <sighs> with our angel baby. <laughs> with my angel baby. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that was so scary to me. And, yes. I, and, it, and it bothered me, you know, for the longest. And I, like, I was telling my mom and I was telling my family and I was like, imagine if I had just been that, that tired. really tired <laughs> mom yeah. who just wanted to use the bathroom mm-hmm. and that that was how I lost my child, mm-hmm. you know? And so it's just, I don't know, it's so crazy, but it makes me think of that when yeah, you say the, it's very the water scary. park story. Heck, when the pavilion used to be here back in the day, cause you know, we're, we're locals and my brother was probably like three. So he was standing there um, with my family. We were on a ride and he was just standing there and a couple, same thing, couple came by, grabbed his hand and kept walking. And um, a couple seconds later, my dad looked around, couldn't find him, saw like some couple like way off in the distance holding his hand, just walking. And he like ran up and got him and was like, what the hell? And they were just kind of like, oh, like they acted like they didn't realize they thought it was somebody else. I don't know. But um, I mean, heck, that could have happened to him. And that was years ago. I mean, so, I mean, these are, but these are just all these instances that we know about. I, I was mean, at Walmart last week when Justin was out of town with the kids and this man mm-hmm. followed me around the store and I'm like a crazy person when I shop at Walmart. I'm like over here and then over there and over here and over there and then looking at tank tops and makeup and like, I mean, I'm all over the place. And that man was everywhere I looked, he was there. There was no reason for him to be looking at tank tops. You know what I mean? And even my 11 year old was like, we looked at each other and I like, you have to be hyper vigilant. You do. And then I found this really cute, very large college kid that would walk me to my car. <laughs> so sweet. Good for car. you. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't mess around. I yeah. waited him out, stared him down. But well, that's the thing. We don't need to, I mean, even though we should be able to run at 430 in the morning, the reality is, is that there can't. are sickos out there and you have to be careful. So don't be like, oh, well, I'm just going to be tough and do it. No, like you need to be safe. You need to use precaution. Like I have this issue where I want to go run, but my neighborhood, I don't feel comfortable. I'm right by the highway. It's just kind of like a circle off the highway. And so I'm just like, nope. if I want to run, I go to Market Common or I have to drive somewhere to, to run. And um, yeah, you just, 
you have to be careful. I know a list of kind of like, you know, ways to be careful while you run kind of have come out since this whole thing happened. And it was kind of like, make sure one ear, (laughs) make sure you run in groups, make sure you have some sort of protection, like pepper spray or something on you, Um, you know. Have you seen the new Apple Watch and the new um, iPhones that are coming out? No, does it have like a tracker? It has this whole thing on it and it it has a button that you can um, push that'll give you, it'll ping you and it's like an emergency deal. Oh wow. That way if, if, if this kind of thing happens to you that you can call for help without anybody ever even knowing really, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And and if Oprah didn't teach me anything as a child, as a latchkey kid, um, is that you fight like hell. If you, if anybody ever tries to yep. abduct you, and I tell my mm-hmm. kids the same thing, you literally use all your body weight, like go limp, and then you fight like hell. Because it's really, it's hard picking up 150 pounds uh, yeah. of dead weight. A two year old like yeah, that is I hard know. to pick up. Yeah, so, and then you fight like hell and you don't go anywhere. Yeah. They try to put you in a car, you fight like hell. You bite, you kick, you scream, you do everything and anything you possibly can. Well, I know you said, going back to Eliza, and you said that she fought like hell. How do you, how do you know that? Have you seen the they they the the police department said that when they watched the videos because there's all those closed cameras through the university that mm-hmm. you could see her being abducted and she fought. well i know that um when i was reading you know articles about this that when she was abducted that the car stayed there in the parking lot for like four minutes before it drove off and in my head i'm imagining her still fighting mm-hmm. while it's sitting there um, because yeah it said that this car followed her it stopped the guy ran like a crazy person towards her. They said he ran very aggressively towards her. So, you know, um, and then, you know, abducted her, but then the car stayed there for another four minutes and just sat there before it drove off. And I'm just thinking, She's doing what were those four minutes survive. like? Yeah, the, the hill, the fight. Yeah, the mm-hmm. fight that must have been going on in that car for four minutes. Like you said, I learned from Oprah, never let them take you to a second location. Never let them, I mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 So. Well, obviously, we don't have all the details for this story yet. Things are still coming out. Um, yeah. It's a very recent story, um, but it, it, it's a great thing to, to have a discussion about with with women um, and being hyper vigilant again with safety and um, your children, watching out for your children and yourself, and just you know being as safe as you can be. Mm. Any other thoughts on this, ladies? I know we could go on about this for yeah, ever, but well, um, Sade and, and um, Amy, what what do you have to say for folks if we have anybody local that that has something like this go on, or they're they're curious about the process or anything like that? Can they come see us? Yeah, absolutely. You can come see us, and we'll hold your hand through the process. And if and if something happens, and well, first let me just say this: um, our intuition our gut tells us things all the time, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as women, we're told not to buck the system, to be polite, all those things. Screw that, right? Um, So trust, that's like your knowing. That's the universe and God trying to tell you something. That's your spidey Mm -hmm. sense in life. So listen to it, one. So when something didn't feel right, run. Drop your shit and run. Just don't even worry about it. You mm-hmm. you protect yourself and you run. You do whatever you got to do to get out of that situation or to alert somebody or whatever. But when these things happen, and even though you weren't abducted, right? So like that family um, with the water park situation, yeah. they, didn't, they didn't even call the police in the beginning. And one of the things I said was, absolutely, you need to call the police. Like we need to be pulling cameras. We need to put eyes on these people because they can be tied to something else. And when you see it or it happens to you, even though they didn't get you or it just mm-hmm. felt wrong, report it. Mm-hmm. Report it because it's it's that report that came in at 645 that morning that said, something's not right. I hear somebody struggling. That's what helped lead to look at those cameras at that time. So yeah, when you man. see something, you do something. And when mm-hmm. something happens to you, even though it didn't feel like it, could, it was anything, but it could have been, report it because those things matter. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's what happened is when, when she finally got her granddaughter back, she was just so happy to have the granddaughter back. And the story that this couple told was, you know, oh, whatever. Because we're women, she, we don't want to book the right. system. We, she what thought, if I got it she wrong? believed it. Yeah. She was like, oh, this was like an honest mistake. And the more she thought about it, and then she posted on this mom's group, and they were all like, you need to call the police. Mm-hmm. And she did, but it wasn't until later mm-hmm. um, where it really sunk in, like what the this heck just happened. happened. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
But now, you know, they, and if it they've is, even if it's a week later, report it. Yes. You know what I mean? Well, because, yeah, I mean, now that now they've ID'd, ID'd this couple and other reports have come out that I've seen that same couple at other parks and stuff. Oh, no. So, um, you know, I don't know if they've caught this couple or if they're still out, but they know who to look for. Um, but, yeah, that's great. Ad- that's great advice. He report it. Yeah. He ran over. <laughs> People like that. Hurt children and women. Sorry, any last you thoughts? You should not be in any place with children. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This world, you should not be in this world. If you're, yeah. you heard babies you and women, you don't get to go, go to water down. parks anymore. Yeah. Chuck E. Cheese is. I, just I know. Saying, like, let's yeah. say no. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Trust your spot. It does feel like that I sometimes. Do that. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, ladies, for your input on this very important topic. Folks, you can always, you know, send us your questions or comments. We're going to stay updated on this story as it's, you know, more information is coming out. I'm sure we'll probably do another another follow up on this. Um, you can find us anywhere on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. We have a ton of informational videos on YouTube as well of our, as our past episodes for the Carolina Justice Report. New episodes come out every Tuesday at 2 p.m. We would love to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching. When life gets-